forget to cover it. There we are. Congratulations. You're winning the war on poverty. Well, we all have to do our bit. Mm. Listen, Dottie. Those look-alike contests, are they ever on the level? Of course. What makes you think they're not? Well, I once entered an Elizabeth Taylor look-alike contest and I never even heard from them. You expected to win an Elizabeth Taylor look-alike contest? Oh, of course not. I'm too tall. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, you take longer to eat lunch than Henry VIII. Uh, I, I had to do a little shopping please, and I... Please, please, no excuses. Will you get to work? We have a lot to do. Yes, please, sir. Yes. please. <laughs> Ma'am, I wonder if you can help me. Oh, I certainly hope so. I'd, uh, I'd like to apply for a loan. My name is Chuck Willis, and... Uh... Oh! Well, I, I thought you were... Your name is Chuck Willis? Something wrong with that name? Oh, no, sir. No, sir, I love it. I love it. Uh, you want to apply for a loan? Well, right over here. See this gentleman right here. Mr. Mooney, mm -hmm. Mr. Mooney, uh, this gentleman would like to apply for a loan. This is Mr. Willis. Mr. Willis? Oh, yeah. I have a small uh, trucking business. Very small, just got one truck, which needs some work. I uh, take about 200 bucks to fix it up, and I'd like to borrow the money. Well, do you have any collateral, Mr. Willis? Well, only my truck. Uh huh? Here's the registration slip. Uh-huh, that. Mr. Willis, this truck is 21 years old. <laughs> well, that's why it needs fixing. <laughs> I'm very sorry, Mr. Willis. I'm sorry. Mr. Willis. Mr. Willis, do you really need money? Oh, no, no, no. I'm really an eccentric millionaire. Of course I need money. <laughs> well, Better get that truck fixed. Yeah, I know. Well, I know how you can get a brand new truck just by having your picture taken. My picture taken? Yeah, and you'll get $5,000. Which you will split with me, because I will arrange everything. You know, you're a little nuts. Well, now, that may be, but you know something? You look just like Robert Goulet. Who? Robert Goulet. I never heard of him. Well, anyway, you look like him. The Mammoth Studios giving $5,000 to the man who looks the most like him. Now, what have you got to lose? My mind. Now listen. Now listen to me. You just be at this address tonight. I'll take your picture and your troubles will be over. You just look at the birdie and pow, instant money. You know something? What? We don't need no birdie. You'll do. Now what do you mean by that? You're a cuckoo. Will you stop it? I'm just trying to help you. Okay, okay. Like you say, what I got to lose, right? Good. Don't, don't, don't lose the address. No, no. And be there at 8 o'clock, okay? Oh, I'll be there. All right. You won't regret it. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mooney. Mr. Mooney, I have wonderful news. Good. When are you quitting? I'm not quitting. Mammoth Studio is running a Robert Goulet look-alike contest. Robert Goo who? <laughs> Robert Goulet. He's a big star, and, and I have the winner of that look-alike contest. Well, bully, I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, that man, that Mr. Willis that was just in here, he's a cinch to win the contest. He'll get first prize, and all you have to do is take his picture. Who takes what? Well, I can't afford a professional photographer, and even if I could, he wouldn't be as good as you are. Why, why you just take wonderful, wonderful pictures. This picture of Mrs. Mooney is just fantastic. That is a picture of the Grand Canyon. 
You know, it does look like Irma with her mouth open. Well, well, anyway, it's a marvelous picture. Why, it's like a, a, a Da Vinci. Da Vinci was a painter. Oh. And I am a banker, and I have work to do. And so do you. Will you please get at it? Now, go, 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 go! <laughs> Well, there goes all that money. Oh, dear. Oh, what money? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. The winner of the contest gets $5,000. And Mr. Willis is giving me half for arranging everything. Now, do you realize what my half comes to? Certainly. $1,250. <laughs> $1,250? Half of $5,000 is... Twenty-five hundred. Yes, and half of your twenty-five hundred is my twelve hundred and fifty. You're joking. Then why aren't you laughing? <laughs> well, why should you give half of my half? I'll give you ten percent. Mrs. Carmichael, you do not bargain with Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> of the most expensive photographic equipment money can buy. Okay. Uh, okay. Is Willis here yet? Yes, he's inside getting into his costume. Costume? Yeah. I borrowed a Western outfit for him. Just to take a picture? Yes. Now, all the other contestants are sending in plain headshots, you know. But Robert Goulet is playing a marshal in the picture, so we photograph Chuck as a Western marshal. Now, that is showmanship. I must admit, Mrs. Carmichael, you are thinking. Thank you. Which is more than you do in the bank. Oh, why do you always have to add well, that? Well, that's true. Good it's heavens. Now, Look at this. Hmm? What? Who's that? It's Robert Goulet. Oh. As he's in his Western outfit for the picture, see? Now, when I get through with Chuck, he's going to look exactly like that. Hmm. I have all the makeup right here. Hmm? See? Grease paint, rouge, eyeshadow, eyebrow, pencil, mascara, everything. Wouldn't plastic surgery be simple? Well, here's our marshal now. <laughs> oh, you must give me the name of your tailor. I got a tattoo that's looser. Well, I, I, I can't understand it. I got a size 38. I'm a size 42. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Sit down, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> sit in these pants? You gotta be kidding me. Well, come on, now. You gotta sit down while I put the makeup on you. Makeup? Oh, no, you're not putting any of that guck on me. Now, I have to. I have to make you up to look like Robert Goulet in the picture. Now, if you want to win the $5,000, sit down. <laughs> well, okay, but I never figured I'd have to put on makeup to get my truck fixed. <laughs> Now, I'm going to have to give you some real bushy eyebrows, because Mr. Goulet is wearing very bushy eyebrows in this picture, and all Western marshals, you know, always have those big bushy eyebrows. Is it always this painful? No, no. Hold still. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to put some eyeshadow up here, because I want you to look, close your eyes. And relax your face. I want you to look real weather people. I could have done <laughs> What's that? Haven't you ever seen a horse before? <laughs>
That's a horse? <laughs> Three dollars, man of war. Come on, Chuck. What's taking him so long? You sure you got the right flashbulb? Well, of course. Come on, Chuck, hurry up. Hurrying in this outfit would be suicide. <laughs> What's that? That is a horse. You are a marshal. You gotta have a horse. Now, come on, leap into the saddle. Not with these pants on. Come on now, Chuck. We gotta have you up there so we can take the picture. Come on. Just stand there. Come on, help him up. Oh. All right. Uh, well, now, let's see. <coughs> you, uh, grab my leg. Grab my leg. Your leg. All righty. Leg up. Yes. Here we go. Are you ready? Up All and right. over. Forget it. I told you it's impossible. Now, Chuck, nothing is impossible. Now, you got to get up there so we can take the picture. Yeah. Now, come on. Uh -huh. Let's see, uh, if I, well, maybe... No, do the same uh, no. way. <laughs> Come here. No, I bet they didn't have this much trouble making Gone with the Wind. Come here, Dobbin. Come here, Dobbin. Come here, Dobbin. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, yeah, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Get your legs over there. Come here, Dobbin. How could anything stuffed with hay be this hard? All right, Mr. Moody, are you ready? Come on. Oh, I'm ready. I'm sure all you got the right the flash bulb and everything. Yeah, now, no. Chuck, yes, Chuck, I want you to sit up straight and look yeah. off into the sunset. <laughs> oh, the sunset's over there. Don't look like an Indian. <laughs> Back there. Look off there and get, get that special look that, that, that Western Martians have, you know? All right. All right, now, Chuck, smile. Smile about what? <laughs> Good one. Okay. That was a beauty. Are you sure? Yes, yes, I have everything. Yes, it was all right. All right, all right. Now you can go down, Chuck. Yeah. That's what you think. <laughs> Help him down. Give me the camera. Oh, uh, be careful. I will. Be careful. I will. Be careful. Uh, oh, come on. Okay. There we go. Oh. Now, you sure you got a good one, Mr. Mooney? Oh, it was perfect. perfect. Oh, I want to tell you, Chuck, that's five thousand dollars in the bag. Isn't that great? You'll be able to get rid of your old broken down truck. Well, right now that old broken down truck is in better shape than I am. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, five thousand dollars. I sure hope we won. Well, if I do say so myself, that was one of the best pictures I've ever taken. Yeah? Yeah. I hope you had the right lens for tight pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the contest is over at 6 o'clock today, and Dorothy promised to come right over here and tell us who won. Well, whatever happens, I sure appreciate all the trouble you went to for me. Well, it was a pleasure, Chuck. Oh, I hope that's Dorothy. $5,000. Oh. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Lucy. Oh, boy, have we been waiting for you. Yeah, well, I got here as soon as I could. Hello, Mr. Mooney. Hello. Mr. Goulet, what are you doing here? Ah, uh hi. -huh. you see? What did I tell you? That is not Mr. Goulet. It isn't? No, it isn't. Then who is it? Oh, I think you probably know his name. How would I know his name? Well, now, who won the contest? Arthur Finster. <laughs> Arthur Finster? Arthur Finster? <laughs> Who's Arthur Finster? Well, he won first prize. Melvin Koppel was second and Irving Schwartz third. Oh, but it's too bad he didn't enter the contest. Well, I'm sure Mr. Goulet would have picked him as the winner. But he did enter. He did? Yes, he did. I told you those contests were fake. You know, Chuck, tomorrow we're going over there and see that Mr. Robert Goulet. What for? Because I'm not going to let him get away with this. I let Elizabeth Taylor get away with it, but never again. <laughs> 
Sheila get into this? Yeah, well, <laughs> nothing wrong in being sentimental if the one you love is sweet and strong and gentle. <laughs> Put pride aside and tell me that you love me. will show that I love you. You know, that's really very catchy. I'm glad you, you really like it. You really read it yourself, Mr. Goulet? Yes, I wrote it myself. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Goulet's office. Oh, okay. They want you on the set in 30 minutes. Okay. I'll go in and change. Yeah. Mr. Goulet, the photo lab sent this over. Thank you. <laughs> you had it enlarged? Oh, yeah. If things get really grim around here, I can always get a good laugh from this. Can you imagine some nut sending this into the contest? You know, it does look a little like you. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. That's the worst thing that's been said about me since I forgot the words of the Star Spangled Banner. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Goulet, but ever since we had that contest, everybody looks like you. Don't forget I had to look at Short goulets, fat goulets, thin goulets, brunette goulets, blonde goulets, bald goulets, French goulets, Italian goulets, German goulets, Hungarian goulets. going on around here, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Alex, huh? this is Carmichael. I've had enough, and I don't want any more trouble. But we've got trouble, and they gave it to us, and we're going to give it back. No, no, you you give it back. I'll wait for you outside in the hall. Oh, Chuck. <laughs> I would like to see Mr. Goulet, please. So would I. <laughs> so would I. Yes, Miss Is that you, Mr. Goulet? Well, now, of course it's me. Who are you expecting, Arthur Finster? Aha! Oh. Uh -huh. So they know each other, then it was fixed. Whoever you are, you better come out here. <laughs> now, what's going on, Miss Earl? That is what I would like to know, Mr. Goulet. And who are you? Never mind who I am. Come with me. Come, come. Uh -oh. What have you got to say about him? I must be hitting too many high notes. Mr. Goulet? I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Come on in here. Now, we're going into Mr. Goulet's office, and we're going to find out about this. Now, go on, get in there. Don't leave me! You know, I'm cracking up. I don't want to be out here alone. What's the matter with you? I'm sick. Mr. Goulet? No, 
I'm Chuck. Oh, no. What happened? What happened? It's wonderful. What? What's wonderful? Mr. Goulet he just hired me as his double. What? <laughs> and I'm getting a salary I never heard of in my whole life. Hey, you know, that Goulet's sure a nice guy. He's a lousy actor, but a nice guy. <laughs> I like him. Oh, yeah, he wants to have you out for lunch tomorrow to thank you for getting us together. Me? Lunch with Mr. Goulet? Yeah. When? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in show business. <laughs> Oh, oh, my hair. I, I gotta do my hair. And what'll I wear? Where will we go? Uh, well, well, what do we have? Champagne, I bet, huh? Champagne caviar. Champagne. <laughs> Mr. Goulet? Chuck? No, I'm off of Finsta. <laughs> Reports have to be typed, and these filed right away. But, Mr. Mooney, it's 6.30 already. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carmichael. I still know how to tell the time. <laughs> but all this work will take me at least two hours. Will I get paid time and a half for overtime? No, you won't get paid anything. But that's not fair. I'll be working later than anybody else. You got here later than anybody else. <laughs> excuse for being late this morning. Good, yes. Believable, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Mooney, for being late, but the smog was so thick I couldn't find the bus. <laughs> I couldn't. No, get to work, please. Yes, sir. Working overtime for no money. Nobody appreciates anything around here. Oh, yes, they do. Only this morning, I called our president, Mr. Cheever, and I told him that my chair was worn out, and he told me that I would get a new chair. Yes, indeed. They reward people around here who use their heads. <laughs> then how come your chair wore out in the seat? <laughs> Come on in, Mary Jane. Oh, Lucy, I've got the most wonderful news. You'll never guess what happened to me. You'll never guess in a million years. Well, what happened? Guess. Oh, come on now, Mary Jane. I'm no good at guessing games. I'll give you a little hint. What's the best thing that can happen to a working girl? <gasps> You're getting married. No. <laughs> no? You're engaged? No. You got a date? <laughs> now, I guess I better tell you. I got a raise. Oh, Mary Jane, that is wonderful. Is it much of a raise? Well, no, but at least now my take-home pay is worth taking home. Oh, <laughs> oh that's wonderful. When do you think you're going to get a raise? Me get a raise? Ha! Mr. Mooney won't even pay me for working overtime, let alone get me a raise. When did he give you your last one? 
Well, let me see. It was on Flag Day. I don't remember the year, but our, our flag still had 48 stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah, well. How much money are you making now, Lucy? Oh, I'm ashamed to tell you. But every time I file my income tax, they send me a sympathy card. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, that you wanted more money? Hinted? Look, I've done everything. I've skipped lunch telling him I couldn't afford to eat. I told him I have to walk to work because I can't even afford a bus. The only time I ever got a reaction out of him was once when I came in with big holes in my coat. Oh, and he gave you a raise? No, he gave me a needle and thread and told me to stop looking like a slob. <laughs> forget that this plant is artificial. <laughs> I just don't understand it, Mary Jane. Seems to me that everybody in that bank has gotten a raise except me. Oh, I just think you're using the wrong approach. Well, what is the best way to get a raise? The best way to get a raise is to point out to Mr. Mooney what a good worker you are, that you're never absent, you're never late, and you never make mistakes. <laughs> What's the next best way? <laughs> Have you ever tried to appeal to his good side? I've never been able to find it. <laughs> well, Lucy, honestly, you've been there long enough. You're entitled to a raise. You're telling me. Well, you should just ask for it. I have. Be firm about it. Go in there in the morning and beard the lion in his den. Okay, but it would be easier getting a raise from a real lion. <laughs> Mooney speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Cheever. Yes, sir, the new chair arrived, sir. It's a beauty. I've just been admiring, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Cheever. Thank you. Ah. Uh, oh, whee! I'm all right. And how is Mrs. Mooney feeling? She's all right. And, and how is your... No, aunt? you cannot have a raise. <laughs> how did you know I was going to ask for a raise? Mrs. Carmichael, when you come in here on time and inquire about my health and my wife's health, you obviously aren't aiming for a cut in your salary. So <laughs> you get to work. Mr. Mooney, I've been working here a long time now. It seems as though everybody in this bank has gotten a raise except me. Proof. Well, Mr. Mooney, I realize I haven't been a very efficient secretary. True. And I am almost always late. True. And I, I do take a little too long on my coffee breaks. True. And I'm not a very good typist. True. But, Mr. Mooney, you're not going to give me a raise, are you? True. Why won't you? Because, as you just said, you're not efficient, you're always late, you take too long for your coffee breaks, and you are not a good typist. Yeah, but you can't think of one single reason on your own. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, we, uh, we have a very busy day ahead of us. Please get to work. <sighs> Mr. Mooney. What now? I think you are taking a very unappreciative attitude after all I've done for this bank. Just what have you done for this bank? <laughs> well, uh, in what condition was this bank before I came to work for it? It was the third largest financial institution in the city with assets of $300 million and 31 branches. And what condition is it in now? It is the third largest financial institution in the city with assets of $300 million and 31 branches. You see, I haven't heard it one bit. <laughs> Back, back, back. I still think you ought to give me a raise. Nobody gives a raise. You have to earn it. Well, how? Either by being very efficient, which in your case is too ridiculous to discuss, <laughs> or by performing some outstanding service for the bank. Like what? 
Well, Mr. Cheever gave his secretary an increase because she devised a new system of bookkeeping. She also suggested an advertising slogan for the bank. She also wears a sweater two sizes too small. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, this is no time to be facetious. Now let me give you a word of advice. Remember, the laborer is worthy of his hire. The climb up the ladder of success is not easy. How do you suppose I got where I am today? You married the boss's daughter. <laughs> I did not. She was his niece. <laughs> I work very hard to maintain my position here. I work extra hours. Uh, for example, today I am having lunch in my office. Yeah. So I can be here for an appointment with an important client. To get ahead, you have to work, 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 work. Now, you think about that, Mrs. Conlon. <laughs> Mr. Mooney. What? Uh, I'm going to take ten more minutes on my coffee break and just think about that. You are impossible. <laughs> You got your new chair, huh? Mooney speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Cheever. Uh, yes, I'm expecting Mr. Leonard any time, sir. Well, I know he's a very important client of ours, sir, but I've never met him personally. He did. He produced the Danny Thomas show, yeah. Dick Van Dyke. Oh, and I Spy. Oh, well, thank you, sir. That's a big help to me. Yes, indeed. Thanks very much. Oh, and uh, thanks again for the chair. I flipped over it. <laughs> uh, goodbye. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes? Mr. Sheldon Leonard is here to see you, sir. I'm expecting him. Send him in, please. See you, sir. Thank you. Have I interrupted your lunch? Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. I had uh, lunch uh, hours ago, sir. Here, oh, uh, Mr. Leonard, won't you sit down, sir? There you are. Thank Make you. Make yourself comfortable. You know, Mr. Leonard, although we've never met, I feel that I've known you for years. I used to go to all those gangster movies you were in. I'm oh. quite a fan of yours. Yes, I made a lot of those gangster movies. Yes. In fact, I still get bumped off three times a night on the Late Late Show. <laughs> Well, you were so believable as a gangster. Maybe I was too believable. Every time I stepped out of the house, the cops arrested me. <laughs> well, now, surely you explained to them who you were. Well, yes, I did, but from force of habit, I'd say it like this. I'd say, all right, get your hands off of me, copper, or you'll wind up in a cement kimono. <laughs> well, it must have been quite a loss to your public when you gave up acting to become a producer and director. What public? No. I was one of those actors that people would see on the street and they'd say, Hey, hey, look, there goes, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> the face was familiar, but they couldn't remember the name. Well, you have to expect that of people. From my own kids? <laughs> yeah. Twice the little finks turned me in for the reward. <laughs> well, I must say it was a lucky day for television when you gave up acting and became a producer. Oh. I don't know about that. Oh, yes, it was. It was indeed. Why, anyone who owns a television set today knows the name Sheldon Leonard. Except my kids. <laughs> they still refer to me as what's his name. <laughs> oh, well, I won't forget your name. No, oh, sir. I love those television shows of yours. Huh? As that Danny Thomas show, the Dick Van Dyke, I Spy. That is the most wonderful show. The way you have worked that around so that the. <laughs> Why, Mr. Leonard. You're blushing. Am I embarrassing you? Well, yes. Oh. <laughs> but please continue. <laughs> you forgot Andy Griffith's show and Goma Pyle. 
friend of yours in Goma Pile. Yes, I do. And I understand that you are currently creating a new series. Well, yes, that's right. We're shooting the pilot now. You're shooting the pilot? <laughs> that's an expression in television. It means that we're making a test, a sample film, you know. In fact, that's why I'm here to see you. Oh? Yes, we have a scene in which there's a bank holdup. And I think it would be more realistic if we filmed it in an actual bank. So, with your permission, I'd like to film it here. Uh, film it uh, here? Yes. In this bank? Yes. Uh, well, well, now, I, I'd like to oblige you, Mr. Leonard, but that would disrupt our entire day. Uh, well, I don't intend doing it during your business hours. No, we'll film it at night after the bank is closed. Well, it's unprecedented and against all regulations. We're bonded and fully insured. Well, I'm afraid not. It's, it's quite out of the question. The screen credit will read technical advisor Theodore Mooney. That's Theodore J. Mooney, and when do we start? <laughs> we want to film it tomorrow night, but I'd like to come in tonight and rehearse the scene with my principal actors, if well, you don't mind. By all means. And don't you worry about anything going wrong, Mr. Mooney. I'll watch your money as if it were my own. <laughs> well, with all the shows you do, most of it is. <laughs> That's a little joke. I just made that up. <laughs> right on the spur of the moment. <laughs> Maybe you could use it in your... Uh, your uh, it's not very funny. Uh, uh, is there anything else I can do for you, sir? Well, I would like to familiarize myself with the layout of the bank here. In the words of the trade, I'd like to case the joint. <laughs> oh, case the joint. By all means, help yourself. Oh, I tried to give you a key, Mr. Oh, Leonard. Yes. yes. Now, here's the key to the front door of the bank, so you can use that tonight. Ah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much. A great pleasure. Meeting you. Technical advisor, Theodore J. Mooney. Ah! <laughs> Busy. Give me your check, Mary Jane. I'll have it cash for you, so you won't have to wait in line. Okay, thanks. Would you uh, like the bills in any particular denomination? Well, I'd like it in tens, but it's only for five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this will only take a minute. Maggie, when you get a chance. <laughs> What's the matter? Shh. What's the matter? Shh. The bank is going to be held up. <laughs> held up? How do you know? That man behind us is a gangster. A gangster? Yeah, look. No, don't look. <laughs> I don't want him to get suspicious. Now you can look. Don't look so long. <laughs> Susie, how do you know he's a gangster? Shh, because I recognize his face. Just look at him. Don't look. <laughs> well, are you sure he's a gangster? Of course I'm sure. Well, he's probably one of the ten most wanted crooks in the whole country. Doesn't he look like a crook to you? Don't look. <laughs> you know something? I think I saw his picture in the post office. Oh, boy, he's got a criminal face if I ever saw one. With those beady eyes, that thin, cruel lips, and that low slung forehead. And look at that receding chin. He hasn't got a receding chin. Shh. He probably had a chin job. <laughs> Hey, we can't call the police. He hasn't done anything yet. I'm going over and see if I can hear what he's saying. Hello, Frankie. It's all set for the bank tonight. Yep, it's a perfect setup. Have the boys here at 8 o'clock. No, we can't wait. We have to shoot the pilot. <laughs> I was right. He is going to rob the bank. Why? Not only that, he's going to make his escape in a stolen airplane. How do you know? He just said he was going to shoot the pilot. <laughs> Let's call the police. No, now, wait a minute. We don't have any evidence. Well, you said he was going to rob the bank tonight. Yeah. And I'm going to be right here when he does. Lucy, you're crazy. No, I'm not. The minute he starts robbing this bank, I'm going to catch him red-handed. You better tell Mr. Mooney. I will not. There's probably a reward out for that crook. Mr. Mooney's the type who would keep it. 
Besides, this is my chance to do something for the bank so I can earn my raise. There's got to be an easier way to get a raise. Well, there is, but I'm not the type to wear a sweater. Two sizes too small. <laughs> now, listen. This is what we're going to do. We? Yes, we. Now, listen. <laughs> I already told you so they'll think we're scrub women and not kill us. Well, I hope not. I wouldn't want to get caught dead in this outfit. Never mind. Hey, Charlie, you wait for the car. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, fellas, come on. Oh, the nerve of him coming right through the front door. Oh, really? Stop it. Shh, don't oh, touch. Listen, don't talk. Well, you're talking. Let's not talk about not talking. Shh. <laughs> this is really a setup. It's a perfect setup. Yeah. There's a good place for us to line the people up when we start shooting. Right there. Right? <laughs> now remember, this whole thing has got to go like clockwork or we blow the whole bit. Now, Louie, you go back to the cashier's cage and scoop up all the money, right? Go. You, you get ready to unpack the nitro so you can blow the ball. All right? You stay at the door. Keep an eye on the door. <laughs> we can... Louie! Hey, Louie! Now, where did he get to? What's the matter, boss? Louie, disappeared. Go get him, will you? You bet. Now, I want you to remember that you gotta keep an eye on this door all the time. <laughs> Hey, Harry! Harry, Louie! Where did they get to? Everybody is disappearing here. Go find them, will you? Okay, I'll get them. Bring them on. I gotta talk. <laughs> hey, boys. Louie! Harry, Pete! Somebody! Where did everybody get to? here alone. How? Did you see some men go back there? Men? Yeah. If there was men back there, you think we'd be out here? <laughs> <laughs> I'd better go see for myself. I... <laughs> Anything. I'm going to shoot a pilot. That's murder. That's even worse than robbery. Look, ladies, let me explain. This is a mistake. I'm not a crook. Never mind. I know a crook when I see one, and I've seen your face a thousand times. Yeah, of course you have. I'm, I'm, I'm what's his name? <laughs> got me so confused now, even I can't remember. <laughs> Somebody's coming. Oh, baby, another member of his gang. Yeah. Hold in there. Yeah. No, no, look, lady. Quiet. He's only at his own bank. What are you talking? Well, who are you? What are you doing 
doing here? I'm rehearsing a new television series here. A television series? Yes, yes he's the well-known actor producer. Actor? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, I should have recognized you. Why, you're, uh, 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 you're, uh, uh, well, what you gonna call him? Uh, I don't know what's his name. <laughs> He's Sheldon Leonard. He's Sheldon Leonard. Oh, oh, Mr. Leonard. Oh, I feel so embarrassed. I'm terribly sorry. Come on, Mary Jane, let's get out of here. What? I'm sorry. What? Just a moment, you two. Just a moment. I want to know what's going on around here. Well, uh... Yeah, so do I. Yeah, well, uh... I, I'm Mr. Mooney's secretary, and, and I thought you were robbing the bank, and, and Mr. Mooney said I could earn a raise if I did something extra and special, and when I heard that, uh, that, that, you, you, that you were going to shoot a pilot, well, I thought you were crooks, and, uh, and that if I caught you, I, I, I'd get a raise, and, and the Department of Income Tax could stop sending me sympathy cards. <laughs> What's the <she> saying? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I speak seven languages, but not hers. I'm terribly sorry. Come on, Mary Jane. No, wait, 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 wait a minute. Come, come back here. Come here. Uh, what? Uh, you ever done any acting? Acting? Yeah. No, sir. Well, I, I suddenly got this idea for a new television series. You see, it would be about this this kooky red-headed girl. You see, and she works in a bank, and she gets into all sorts of impossible situations. And forget it, nobody would ever believe television set this month, I'll be back to eating my TV dinners in front of my radio. <laughs> Your problems are over. Oh? One of the producers at our studio is looking for a secretary to work at his house over the weekend. That sounds wonderful. Guess who the producer is? Who? Milton Berle. <laughs> Milton Berle, the comedian? It's Milton Berle, the producer. Now he's producing a motion picture. Oh, he doesn't have his television show anymore, does he? No! Oh, the poor soul. I guess he needed a steady job. <laughs> well, I'll help him all I can. Oh, he's a wonderful man. Okay, Miss Evans. Uh, when he comes in, will you tell him that Milton Berle called? <laughs> Ruth, Ruth. Yes, do you? Did 
Did that secretary get here yet? No, not yet. Honey, while you're waiting for her to come, yeah. I wish you'd eat some breakfast. Honey, I'm too busy. I'm working on the budget for the picture. Well, you shouldn't be too busy to eat. Huh? You've been working night and day. What are you trying to prove? Oh, I happen to love show business, and I, I want to make good. Make good? Yeah. Are you kidding? Mm. You've had a very successful career. What? As a comedian? Well, Ruth, when a man matures, he wants the kind of success that brings respect. I mean, when you meet people today and they talk about Burl, what's the best thing they can say about him? He's funny. He's funny. He's funny. <laughs> well, I'm out to prove that Burl is not funny. <laughs> That's not a nice thing to say. I didn't say anything. Mm, that's what hurts. You love me too much to say it. Of course I love you. Yeah. That's why I hate to see you working so hard, oh. taking on all this hard work. Oh, Ruth, don't Seems to it. me you've had enough success in show business to satisfy anyone. Oh. I mean, vaudeville, movies, television, nightclubs. Mm. Why do you want to be a producer? Don't you understand, Ruth, dear? I want to grow. Well, then he ought to stop smoking. I was... <laughs> to meeting Mr. Burl. May I take your coat? Oh, thank you. My, you know, I'm a, I'm a very big fan of his. Uh, once I sent him a letter and, and he sent me an autographed picture. Well, now you can meet him in person. Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, this is Mr. Burl. How do you do? Oh, Mr. Burl, I can't tell you how happy I am to meet you. I'm one of your biggest fans. Oh, you're putting me on. No, I'm not. You can ask your maid. <laughs> This is Mrs. Burl. Oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I apologize. That's all right. Don't apologize. I'm still his maid. <laughs> I have some shopping to do. Yeah. I'll see you later. All right, darling. Goodbye, Mrs. Burl. Uh, don't I... spend too much money, honey. <laughs> Come on, we better get to work. Yes. Uh, like, a, like a gag I used to do. All play and no work makes no jack. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> It, it wasn't, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> oh, you're always funny to me, Mr. Burrow. Really? You know something, I used to just love when you dressed up as a hillbilly really? and you wore those funny clothes and you were, oh, 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 you remember that? I used to just die at you. Oh, I remember what you dressed up like a seal. You were wonderful. You went, oh, 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 oh. You were a riot. Thank you very much, but I'd like to get some work done. Oh, Would yes, you sit sir. down here, please? Yes, sir. I, I just know working with you is going to be a ball. Oh, thank you. Now, when you're ready, I'd like to dictate a letter to my director, Mr. Lou Jackson. Yes, sir. I'm ready, uh, sir. Say, dear Lou, regarding uh, your letter of the 25th... <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, well, you always make me laugh. What's so funny about regarding your letter of the 25th? <laughs> Carmichael, will you please tell me what's so funny? Oh, I don't know. It's the way you say things. Yeah. <laughs> All I said was regarding yes, your letter of the 25th. I know, I know. <laughs> and you look like a rabbit when you <laughs> Now let's get back to work. Yes, sir. I uh I loved, uh, I loved your suggestion, because I think that we should get Robert Wagner to play the part of the pilot. Oh, Robert Wagner's very good. Thank you. If you have any other ideas on this, let me hear from you. Well, I'll think about it tonight. I, <laughs> I was dictating. Oh, oh. Just sign that, yours truly. Would you do that for me? Yes, sir. And now I have another important letter, personal letter to get out, and it goes to this address right here. Mr. Marvin Kane, Beverly House of Fashion. That's yes, right. Sir. I'd want to order something for my wife. Next week is our wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Dear Marvin. What uh, anniversary is it, Mr. Burl? Our uh, 14th. Oh. Yeah. Dear Marvin, next week is my... Where did you meet Mrs. Burl? <laughs> it was a blind date. Some friends brought her to my television show. I can still see her sitting out in the audience that night. She was wearing a beautiful black velvet gown, trimmed in ermine and a string of pearls with matching earrings. Oh. 
That was our first date. And by the way, that was our first fight. Your first fight? Yes. Well, well what did you fight about? Well, I came out on the stage wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Goodness. Well, if you had a fight on your first date, how did you ever get together? Would you really like to know, Miss Carmichael? Oh, I'd love to know. A dozen roses did the trick. Oh, that was sweet. Yes. It was the first time anyone ever sent me flowers. <laughs> Wrapped in a girdle. Wrapped in a girdle? Oh, what a sense of humor your wife had. That's true. That's why I begged her to marry me. You begged her sure. to marry you? Yes, I did. Oh, how Where else could I get a part where the baggy pants comic winds up with the lovely leading lady? Oh, what a nice thing to say. <laughs> Dear Marvin. I, I already have that. <laughs> Anything wrong? Oh, um, no. I, I just think the way you feel about Mrs. Burrow is very touchy. Well, she's my wife. Yeah, I know, I know, but you you hear about Hollywood and Hollywood marriages, you know. I've heard that sometimes stars are so, so involved with themselves that they're just not capable of loving anyone else. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Look how I love Marvin. I've called him dear six times already. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, uh, dear Marvin, next week is my 14th wedding anniversary, and I would like to order something very special for Ruth. A black velvet gown trimmed in ermine and a nice strand of pearls with matching earrings. Oh, Mr. Burrow, what a beautiful thought. Getting the same outfit she wore on her first date with you. Oh, no wonder you have such a great marriage. You're so sweet and so kind and no, so no, thoughtful. No, 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 Mrs. Carmichael. Ruth is the one who's sweet and kind, seeing that I eat right, that I don't work too hard, sitting out in the audience and laughing at all my jokes. Believe me, that takes loyalty, real loyalty, especially some of the jokes I told in Kansas City. <laughs> you know, Miss Carmichael, whenever I'm sick, she brings me hot chicken soup. Oh? And when I have a fever, she brings me frozen chicken soup and puts it on my head. <laughs> and, and that's one of the jokes I told in Kansas City. <laughs> and she laughed? <laughs> she even applauded. Oh, she really loves you. <laughs> That's why I try to make her happy. And on our anniversary, I'll spring the gowns and the pearls and the earrings all in such a way that it'll be a complete surprise. How? What are you going to do? I'll come down the stairs wearing the whole outfit. Oh, girl, that's beautiful. I really think that's going to be Oh, you're a wonderful couple. Thank you. about lunch. I'll, I'll heat some tea, and I'm going to look for something for a sandwich. Well, now, look, Mr. Burrell, you have a lot of work to do. How about letting me fix lunch? So you think you can find your way around? Oh, sure. I love to look in other people's refrigerators. Really? <laughs> I'm a medicine chest man myself. <laughs> oh, funny. Mr. Burrell, you're funny. Thank you. Oh, look here. Some beautiful tomatoes and lettuce and... Oh, you know something might make a wonderful Caesar salad. You do? Yeah, better than Julius. The... <laughs> Caesar salad better than Judas. That's funny. Funny. <laughs> you know where I can find a very large salad bowl? I'll find Any one. Any kind I'll of I'll find one. What's that? That's the front door, dear. Oh, I'll get it. Yeah. Excuse my secretary, she didn't mean to kill your entrance. <laughs> she just gets excited about movie stars. Well, it's good to see you, Ruder. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruder is a friend of the family. Oh. Uh, let, let's sit down. The, what? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Ruder, this is my secretary, Mrs. Carmichael. Hello. How do you do, Miss Lee? I'm so glad to meet you. I go to see all of your movies. You do? Yes, some of them I see two and three times. Well, thank you. I never get enough of you, Miss Lee. You know, I just wish you were old enough to have some of your pictures on the Late Late Show. <laughs> oh, that's very flattering. <laughs> to me, it isn't. Uh, let's uh, sit down and get comfortable. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, excuse me, I, I have some water boiling. 
Milton? Yes, dear. Where's Ruth? Oh, Ruth, she's out shopping. Uh, she's oh. Not around. Now, what is all this I hear about your being a producer? That's true, darling. I'm producing a great one. The picture's called The Friendly Sky. And the reason I have to come over here, there's a part in it for you that would be just perfect. Oh, really? Yeah. What's it like? Well, it's a very dramatic part about a girl who becomes involved with a married man. Oh, Milton, that doesn't sound like me. Oh, no. I never play the other woman. I always play wholesome parts. You know, the girl next door. Well, th that's why it'll be good for you, because it's different. Look, instead of me trying to sell you, how about, uh, uh, Ruta, reading a scene with me? I have it right here. Uh, turn to page 17. I don't come in until page 17. <laughs> well, the early pages are all about you. They build up your entrance. Oh. <laughs> now, honey, the scene starts where you say, where's your wife? Look it All up. right, let me just look this over. That's fine. Uh, by the way, my secretary's fixing some lunch. Will you join us? Fine. Yeah, how about a cup of tea while we're waiting? Oh, I'd love some. Okay. Mrs. Carmichael. What? Mrs. Carmichael. Yeah, where are you? <laughs> I'm talking on the intercom. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. You're coming in loud and clear. <laughs> Miss Lee is going to join us for lunch. Oh, really? Yes. And we'd like a cup of tea now. Oh, Roger. <laughs> well, how about it, beautiful? Are you ready? All right, Milton. Okay. Now. Where is your wife? Who cares about my wife? We're alone. <laughs> It's so wonderful to see you again. Not nearly as wonderful as it is for me to see you. It's a shame that we have to steal these precious moments. I treasure every one of them. But what about your wife? Are you sure she doesn't suspect? My wife is too stupid to suspect. I've been trying to get rid of her for years. Just cuddle close and let my lips caress your loveliness. Oh, my love, my pet. It's no use. I can't go on sharing you. I can't, I can't, I can't! <laughs> crying over spilt milk. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> very funny. Luna, well, that's a wonderful part, am I right? Oh, I don't know, Milton. I'll have to think about this. you were talking to her. Uh, one lump, please. Oh, Mrs. Carmichael. Yes? Would you mind giving me a couple of lumps? I would love to. your lunch as soon as it's ready, sir. Uh, Mrs. Carmichael. Yes, sir. Would you uh, care to join us for some tea? Oh, I wouldn't think of intruding on your privacy. <laughs> She's a wonderful secretary, and she makes a Caesar salad better than Julius. <laughs> Milton, that's a very funny line. It's mine. <laughs> I can't believe it. I thought it was 
such a nice man. Imagine that. I used to laugh at him all the time. I'll never laugh at him again. Tell him that. Turning around with another woman when he's got such a wonderful wife. He ought to be ashamed of himself, that's what. Hi, Mrs. Carmichael. Oh! Uh, hi, Mrs. Burrow. <laughs> What's Mr. Burrow got you doing? Oh, well, I, 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 I'm just fixing him some lunch. Well, that's very nice of you. Where is Mr. Burrow? Uh, but, but he's inside with a, a friend of the family. <laughs> friend of the family? Uh, Miss Ruta Lee. Oh, how nice. Milton's been wanting to get together with Ruta for a long time. <laughs> He got together with her, all right. I think I'll go in and say hello. Oh, no, no, they're very busy. They're very busy in there. I don't think you should go in. Uh, I, you, you've been busy, too, haven't you? Uh, yes, I've been doing some shopping. Yeah. I bought Milton a surprise anniversary gift. Oh, how nice. Well, I think I'll just poke my head in. No, don't poke. <laughs> Uh, so you, you got him a surprise gift, huh? Yes. I bought him a new golf bag. Oh, that's wonderful. Sometimes a man gets tired going around with the same old bag. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's nice when a man has two bags. <laughs> that's a good gift. <laughs> No, don't let him know you're home, please. You, you better stay right out here. You don't go in there because then you'll know you're home and you'll come out here and he might see your gift. You better hide it. You really ought to hide this. Well, yes, it's a beautiful gift. You don't want him to see it. If he knows you're home, he might come out here. Why don't you hide it upstairs? Maybe you're right. Yeah, I know I'm right. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you're fixing Milton some lunch. He needs to keep up his strength. <laughs> Milton, I just don't think this part is right for me. Why not? Well, like I said, I've never played the other woman before. Oh. Now, the public accepts me in a certain image, and I just don't think I can be convincing in this role. Convincing? Are you kidding? Rudy, you'd be great. Do you think I'd let you do anything that might hurt your image or jeopardize your career just to get you in my picture? Yes, I do. Well, that's beside the point. <laughs> now, Ruta, please, will you take the script home, get the feel of it, then come over here Monday night, have dinner with Ruth and me, and we can discuss it, huh? Well, all right, I'll take the script. But I can't possibly be here Monday night. Because Monday night, you and Ruth are coming over to my house. I'm having a little dinner party in honor of your 14th wedding anniversary. That's wonderful, darling. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe sometime during the evening, you and I can sneak off together someplace and discuss things. All right. <laughs> Mr. Burrow. Yes, Mrs. Carmichael. May I toss the salad? Please do. <laughs> What are you, some kind of a nut? You're the one who's some kind of a nut. Married 14 years to a wonderful wife. A wife who worries about you, brings you chicken soup when you're sick, and laughs at your stale jokes in Kansas City. And what thanks does she get? You call her stupid. And carry on with another woman. Another woman? Me? Don't act so innocent, you teeny bopper, you. <laughs> Just cuddle close. Let my lips caress your loveliness. Oh, my love. Oh, my pet. I can't go on sharing you. I can't. I can't. I can't. Caress your loveliness. Are you crazy or something? That was the scene we were rehearsing from his picture. From one of my, my new pictures. Your picture. Yes, my... Ah, a likely story. <laughs>
Rose, Rose. I thought you gave up comedy. <laughs> I tried to keep all of this from you, you poor little thing. Now, now, Ruth, this is an entire misunderstanding. I'll say it yes, is. Yes, yes. Mrs. Carmichael overheard us rehearsing a love scene, uh, and she believed it. You bet I believed it. I heard every word you said. You're not kidding me. Now, will you stop that? G give me that. This is a script. This is a script that we're reading. Thanks. Don't you see these lines? Yeah, what script? Caress me, my love. Let me caress uh, your loveliness. My love, my I cat. I can't bear to share yeah, it. Yeah, read it. Look. Read it. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. Oh, good heavens. But when I heard it over the intercom, it all sounded so real. You were so convincing. Oh, I don't know what came over me. I know what came over me. <laughs> you that you can play the part. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, this is great. This is show business. Yeah. Hey, let's all have some lunch. We'll you have some lunch because the salad's on me. <laughs> in my whole life. Shove, shove, shove. Push, push, push. And some of the women still wouldn't let me through. <laughs> That's so funny. Whoever said women were the weaker sex never went shopping with us. <laughs> That's for sure. Gee, I wish that bus would come. I'm so tired. Yeah. You know, they had some marvelous bargains there today, Lucy. They sure did. That's why I wanted to go to that store. You know, I have to be very careful of every penny that I spend. Well, how come then you bought three steam irons? Well, when they're marked down like that, you have to take advantage of it. <laughs> At that price, they were a steal. Lucy, what are you going to do with three steam irons? Well, you never know when two of them are going to break down. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. Well, you know, you should talk. Last week, you bought a 100-pound sack of dog food. Oh, well, that was half price. You don't even have a dog. <laughs> I might get one someday. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
Want a bite? Oh, no, honey, I'm on a diet. You are? Yeah, I've been on a diet for a couple of weeks. I didn't know that. Yeah. For heaven's sake. Now, Lucy, you what? did it again. I did what again? You threw paper on the sidewalk. Oh, that. Listen, you do that all the time. The other day, you threw peanut shells all over the street. You know, you could get arrested for that. I could get arrested? Yes, of course. You know, it's very serious. That's against the Keep America Beautiful campaign. You might have committed a federal offense. A federal offense? Yeah. I just hope nobody saw you. Oh, for heaven's sake, I better get it. No, no, Lucy. What? Policeman. Policeman? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they saw what I did? I don't know. Mary Jane, promise me something. What? If anything happens, save yourself. Pretend you don't know me. Lucy, I can't do that. Promise oh, me. I promise. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me, lady. Uh, does uh, that bag belong to you? I beg your pardon, sir. Are, are you addressing me? Uh, yes, madam, I was addressing you. Does that bag belong to you? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, it does. Oh, okay, sister, it's all over. Let's go. I beg your pardon? Go where? You can cut that innocent act. You have any identification? Well, I have a little birthmark, but I'm certainly not going to show it to a... <laughs> I just don't go around showing it to strangers. Let me see your driver's license. I don't have a driver's license. I don't even have a car. What's your name? Lucille Carmichael. Lucille Carmichael. Ha! Phony name, if I ever heard one. It is not a phony name. Lucille Carmichael is my real name, isn't it? Tell them what my name is. <laughs> Lady, I never saw you before in my life. <laughs> but, uh... Are you coming along quietly, or do we have to get tough? Well, if you feel that way about it, imagine making a federal offense over a little thing like this. I'll take care of that. Oh, thank you. Holy smoke, sister, what have you got in here? Well, three steam irons and... My, my, you have had a busy day. You like, to... <laughs> like to do things in a big way, don't you? Well, not really, but they were such a steal. <laughs> Come on, lady, let's go. All right. Come on. All right. We're sure that this Carmichael dame is the red-headed shoplifter that's been pulling all these big jobs. We caught her with the stuff right on her. Those pearls were in her shopping bag. Okay, bring her in. Bring her in, Miller. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Your name is uh, Carmichael. Lucille Carmichael, yes. Lucille is spelled with two L's. Three, if you count the first one. <laughs> uh, officers Peters and Miller, my name is Lieutenant Finch. Well, I'm very happy to meet you all. And you have no idea how happy we are to meet you. Oh, thank you. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Now, just to get off on the right foot, it is my duty to inform you that anything you say will be held against you. Oh, yes, sir. And that you have a right to legal counsel if you so desire. Oh, no. I don't think that's necessary. It isn't that big a thing. Oh? <laughs> well, suppose we all just settle back and you tell us what you did today. Oh, <laughs> well, now that's not going to be very entertaining. <laughs> we'll find it fascinating. Oh, well, okay, where shall I start? Why don't we start with the beginning, this morning? This morning? Well, let's see now. I got up early, about quarter of eight, I think. Maybe it was ten of. Yeah, about ten of eight, I think. And I read the paper. I always read the paper every morning. And I saw this ad for this marvelous sale. And I just love sales. So I called Mary Jane uh, uh, and I... Uh, Mary, who's Mary Jane? Uh, she's my cat. <laughs> Do you often phone your cat? Oh, yes, always. Always when she's away from home. I always call her and I say, What's new, pussycat? 
Well, let's, uh, let's forget the feline phone calls. Tell us about this sale you went to. Oh, well, as I say, I, I love sales. And, well, I'm the sort of person who just cannot resist picking up a few things. <laughs> we can imagine. So, just like that, you decided to go shopping. Oh, yes, I do it all the time. Especially when I don't feel like going to the bank. Bank? Yeah, that bank job gets so monotonous. We'll talk about the bank job later. Oh. Yeah. Right now, we'd like to hear about your shopping. All right, but why? Lady, when you've been shopping, word gets around. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, you better believe it, sister. Well. So you went shopping and you picked up a few things. Well, more than a few. More than a few. There were, let's see now, three steam irons, a little bottle of cologne, a pair of curtains, two pair of curtains, and, uh, oh, I found a new eyelash curler, and uh, a floor lamp. Floor lamp? Where was that? It wasn't in the bag. Well, of course not. You just can't walk out carrying a floor lamp. <laughs> it's being delivered. By the store? Certainly. Boy, what nerve! <laughs> you shot pretty good. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It isn't easy. With a crowd around like that, you have to be fast. <laughs> well, that takes care of the preliminaries. Now to the main event. I beg your pardon? The reason you're here. Oh, that. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I'd, I'd like a chance to explain that. Would you really? Yes, you see, uh... I'm, I'm really not that kind of person. I, I just wasn't thinking. You mean you had a mental aberration? Uh, I, I could have had that, yeah. Now, Carmichael, let's...